Hey guys, what's up? Phil Graham, founder of Authority Network, the world's largest fitness business mastermind. And today I'm going to look at Grant Cardone. I'm gonna distill his thoughts, his values, his beliefs around business, around life, and just share my overall thoughts on those. Now, before we did this video, we had a lot of people reaching out to us and say, hey, why are you gonna do Grant Cardone? He's a fraud, he's a show off, he's actually not as successful as he makes out to be, et cetera, et cetera. Look, here's the deal. I don't agree with everything that Grant Cardone has to say, but I have a lot of respect for the guy. He's clearly very good at the whole personal brand thing. He's had a great level of success. I've been to many of his events over the years and I've seen how they've run. I've seen a lot of the sales and a lot of the stuff that's gone down. He has got a lot of wisdom to share for sure. I don't agree with everything, but there are definitely things that you as a business owner could take from his behaviors, his traits, and his actions in order to help you grow. And that's just the deal. For example, there's gonna be things that you don't agree with in respect to me and what I say. You look at anybody else in the world that you're learning from or listening to, you're not gonna agree with everything. And it's a matter of what find, finding what works for you, applying it to your business and just testing and getting feedback and then moving forward with those lessons. So without further ado, let's get stuck in and see what Grant has to say about growing a great life, building a great business and building wealth. You guys that are just getting started, you're not gonna start right here. You're gonna start down there. Okay, probably in another city, another town. I grew up in Lake Charles, Louisiana, no money, raised by a single mother. I was in debt at 25 years old. The first thing that I had to do in my life was not learn a new skill. The first thing I had to do to get my life moving in the right direction was self-development. It is vital, it was vital for me that I improve myself and I could start depending upon me. I had to show up every day with some rituals, some disciplines, and start getting myself to trust me. Not trust others, but trust myself to do the right thing every day. One of the things that I started doing was beating the sun up every morning. I'm gonna beat that sun up every morning so that I had the discipline and the control of, over my life. So I knew, hey, before that thing pops, I'm gonna pop. I'm gonna get out of bed, depend on myself, get up at the same time every day, and for me that time, regardless of where I was, was beat that sun up. No matter where I am, I'm gonna beat that thing up. So it gives me a sense of control over my own life. Second thing, I had to start cleaning up my life and my friends and my environment. When I was younger, between 15 and 25, I was doing crazy stuff in my life. Wasting my weekends, I had the same. Weekends are for the week. I was drinking, fooling around with a bunch of bad things, bad people, making poor choices. At 25 years old, I cleaned it all up. Quit going to those places, quit using those things, quit hanging out with people that did not have ethics and discipline in their life, that weren't committed to the same things that I was. I wanted to build something in my life. I wanted to become someone. And to do that, to become someone in the eyes of the world, the first thing I had to do was become someone I could depend on. So put some things together, three or four things you can do every day to start the day, kickstart your day, get going in your day to give you a sense of respect for yourself, accomplishment for yourself. Look, just beating that sun up every morning gives me the sense of accomplishment that I did what I said, said I was gonna do, that I woke up when I said I would wake up, and I start building respect for myself, start believing in myself so that I can go out into the world and maybe, maybe, Maybe today, maybe today when I go into this meeting that I'm dressed for, maybe they'll believe in me as much as I believe in me and that'll show up in a contract, a deal, maybe even some money. Beat the sun up. So the first thing that Grant talks about is basically assassinating the old you and redeveloping your identity by working on yourself, investing in yourself, doing personal development, doing study, etc. And to be honest, this is common sense, but quite often people don't understand it. You see, if you run a business and you wanna grow it, you're gonna realize that as you approach new levels in your business, new levels of income, new levels of customers, new levels of team, you're gonna approach new levels. And new levels, new devils, new challenges. Once you solve one thing, another problem creates itself. Once you solve that problem, another problem then arises. And what you've gotta realize is that life and business in many ways is like playing a video game. As you complete one level, the next level gets harder. 
But as you've moved through the levels, you've acquired wisdom, skills, behaviors, automatic responses, all of these things. And that happens by playing the game, but also taking time to sit down and reevaluate what's gone well, what hasn't gone well, and getting really clear on just refining your life and looking at where you're winning and where you're not, and getting really clear in your blind spots, your biases, and all of these things, and then approaching the correct literature, the correct mentors, and people that can advise you, and surrounding yourself with people that are also like-minded is definitely gonna help you win in life. So I couldn't agree any more with this, that you absolutely must invest in yourself first if you are looking to grow your business because you are the number one factor that is gonna make the better decisions, that is gonna lead the team, that is gonna put yourself on the front line of marketing and selling yourself. So if you're not operating at full capacity, your business is never gonna reach its full potential. And quite often, you're gonna to have to strip identities back. You're gonna to have to rebuild yourself from the ground up and that takes a lot of work, a lot of effort, just like training a physique. You have to rip it down. You have to sometimes have a brick down in order to have a brick through, as the famous saying goes. And you gotta build it up. You gotta do the reps. You gotta be consistent. And the same applies to your reading, your studying, your journaling, all of these things. So I couldn't agree anymore. The number one reason businesses fail is the inability, the inability to sell products in quantities great enough and at margins high enough. That is the only reason you will fail. You take too long to go from the idea to selling enough products, volume, at margins high enough. Do that, learn to do that, and you can make any dream a reality. So Grant says the number one reason why businesses fail is because they're not profitable enough. They're not making enough sales. And while there are many reasons why a business can go wrong, bad team, lack of strategic planning, not making enough sales, having wrong messaging, having products that are overpriced, underpriced, high margins. There's a ton of different reasons, supply chain and everything else. This is very, very true. I believe that sales is the lifeblood of a business. You absolutely must know how to sell. I actually think sales is actually more important than marketing. Some people will disagree with me on that, but if you know how to sell, you know how to generate income. If you know how to sell, you know how to influence. And if you know how to sell, you'll be able to influence your market and buy them over to your program, your service, your product, as to why it's the very thing that they should invest in. Um, also as well, if you know how to sell, you'll know how to negotiate roles with people. You'll know how to go negotiate and uh, resolve conflicts inside your team. And sales is all about solving problems for people. So if you can articulate a problem clearly enough and you can do it consistently and you can do it at scale, then you are 100% gonna build trust in your market's mind quicker and ultimately get them to buy into your vision for what you have for them with your services and product. So you absolutely must prioritize sales if you want to be able to survive, you want to provide the cash flow, you want to be able to manage a team and you want to influence your marketplace. Sales is the lifeblood of your business and you absolutely must know how to do it, 100%. All the commitment stuff, oh, you got to be committed. Oh, you got to be committed. We I was talking to my trainer about this. You got to be committed. Yeah, but treat this. There's only one thing you really have to do because the commitment's not going to come until you do this other thing thing that has got me through everything got me to where I'm at today. The thing that changed everything was me just taking action. Just doing it. I mean, I know that's that old Nike saying, right? Just do it. Man, even if you don't feel like it, even if you're not committed, even if you're not getting any gains, even if you're not winning, I talk about this in the rules of success. Show up. Just take action. Make the call. Knock on the door. The main point that Grant's trying to get across here is that implementation is key to success. And I have helped mentor thousands of fitness professionals over the year. I've also come across many thousands more that have said that they want to build a big business, they want to do this and they want to do that, but they haven't actually achieved it. And what I've found working with a ton of fitness entrepreneurs is that the most successful ones are the ones that take action despite being ready. They take messy action and they self-correct and they refine along the way. You see, a lot of people are scared to take action because they don't have their product built, their service built, their ducks aren't in a row, they haven't got every qualification under the sun. And the reality is they're just worried about failing, they're worried about the reaction. Now, don't get me wrong here, there is definitely a time and a place where you need to have certain ducks in a row, certain qualifications in place before you do something. But nine times out of 10, if you are to completely zoom out on your life, zoom out and look at your goals and look at your actions and your behaviors, 
nine times out of ten, they aren't engineered into your day, into your week, into your month, and they're not consistent enough. So you've got to get very, very clear on goals, get clear on the daily processes, and commit to them and play a long game. And not fall into a fallacy that everything should come instantly. You have to have patience and you have to trust in the flow of life and the flow of those activities and actions that you take on a daily basis in order to achieve your outcome. You know, outcomes are the result of processes. They're the result of daily habits that compound over time. And while consistency and commitment is important, you've got to make a commitment to doing the right things. And the only way that you can find out whether or not you're doing the right things is to commit daily action to actually taking action and also refining your actions. What worked well today? What didn't work well today? And this is something that I've mentioned already on this because you can be taking action doing something, but it might not be the most effective way. So you've got to actually set yourself right. What is the ideal outcome that I want? What are the key behaviors? How am I going to measure this? What am I going to know? Uh, how am I going to know that this is actually a success? Like, like what are the telltale signs that I'm doing a good job? What are the telltale signs that I'm on the right path? What are the telltale signs that I'm on the wrong path? And you've got to be able to set up those benchmarks so you can self-correct, coordinate, and also have the awareness that you're actually doing the right actions. But big, big focus. Don't be a professional note taker, be a professional action taker. Nine times out of 10, you've got to take action when you're not ready, you've got to jump in, you've got to get on with it and figure it out on the way down. Simple as. If that parachute is wide open, you're falling straight to the ground. You understand what I'm saying? If it doesn't open, if the mind doesn't open, you're in trouble. If it opens too wide, you're a dead man bouncing or a dead woman bouncing. My point to you is this, okay? Most people do actually have an open mind. The problem is many people, they have a mind that's wide open with no filters, no gates, no protection. You listen to everyone. You listen to everyone on Facebook, everyone on Instagram. You listen to your uncle, your aunt, your mom, your dad. When the mind's too open, you get too much data and you go into confusion. If your mind is too open, you're 100% gonna take in far too much information beyond what you actually need, which in many cases is gonna cause paralysis by analysis. And the reality is when you've got too information and you're beyond what you actually need, it becomes quite hard to make a decision. And then you get influenced by loads of different opinions, loads of different people, and you actually don't know what to do first. The reality is you know you've got enough information when you actually start losing opportunities and you need to act when you're actually confident that you know enough. And when you know enough is ultimately when you've spoken to somebody who has been there, done it before you. That's why having a mentor is so important. Uh, that's a great reference point and learning from people that have actually been there, done it and have the lessons, do this, do that, don't do this. That kind of stuff is ultra really, really valuable in the grand scheme of everything uh, in trying to achieve your success. iPad isn't playing game with me, but you get the gist. If you're listening to too many people, you're going to be directed off course. Make sure you're surrounded by the right people. Make sure that you know you've set thresholds when you've got the right amount of information, i.e. when you start losing opportunity. And three, quite often you know you've got enough information when you actually start repeating the same thing over and over again, just in different scenarios. So that's a key time when you know you need to act. Single biggest mistake I've made in my career was not spending money. It's what put me in a position to be able to buy real estate because I had money, but I had to buy the real estate. I had to use the money. Brad Lee made a comment the other day about money. Money is not to be saved and hoarded. Like, like it's no good if you don't use it. This is the problem with Bitcoin. It, it, how, when, do, when do I transact with it, right? I'm sitting on a million dollars worth of Bitcoin right now. I can't get rid of it fast enough. I can't go buy stuff with it. So until that, that, that situation is resolved, right? It's why people don't hoard gold anymore. You don't keep gold because you can't exchange it. Money is to be used. For those of you out there that are like complaining about the cost of anything, the truth is that's what that money's for. The only thing, the only purpose money has is to be used. And, and I was scared that I couldn't produce more money. So every time I spent money, I complained about it. Today, I'm like, that's the biggest mistake I ever made should have been spending more money. Uh, it wouldn't have take, taken me 30 years. In the first five years, I should have borrowed money I didn't have and I should have spent money that I did have and I should have gone into debt to do it, to get my brand out there, to get it known. The mattress guy in your town did it. The car guy in your town did it. Whoever spent the most money, 
Whoever, whoever put it all out there all the time, every day on every TV, radio, and the internet wins the battle. It's not the prettiest guy, okay? It's not, it's the guy that out advertises you, that outspends you. It takes courage to make money. So I think the big lesson that Grant's trying to get at here is that you actually need to spend money to make money. If you're making money in your business and you're hoarding onto it and holding a big nest egg or treasure chest of cash and you're not redeploying it into your business, well, it's going to get topped by inflation and you're going to miss out on opportunities. Opportunities to invest in further knowledge, team members which are going to help you serve more people and pull you out of certain aspects of your business that you maybe shouldn't be doing or you're not well paid enough or that are outside your zone of expertise. The reality is you need to redeploy cash into both your personal life so that you can enjoy the fruits of your labor, you can enjoy rewards, and you also need to be able to reinvest that cash into your business so that you can build a team, you can market and reach people, you can invest in the best tools and the best software. Guys, I cannot stress enough. If you don't invest in yourself, you're not gonna be able to acquire the right information quickly enough, you're not gonna be surrounded by the right level of support, and you're going to have to work a lot harder rather than working smarter, which is the best way to do it. You want to take the path of least resistance, and that comes with learning from others, using the right tools, hiring the right people, and investing in your business. You gotta water the plants, guys, in order for them to grow. So, those are the key lessons from Grant Cardone. Hopefully they've been useful. Uh, Grant is a great guy, clearly does some stuff very, very well, personal brand wise, uh, social media marketing, YouTube, everything's really, really dialed in. And I definitely believe there's a lot of stuff that we could take here. And I think probably one of the biggest things is the self-assurance and the confidence that he brings to the table. We could all do the dose of that at some point in our lives or in our marketing or in our sales or in our delivery. And I definitely feel that that's where Grant shines through. So hopefully you find that useful. Comment below, let me know what your biggest takeaway was and uh, I'll get back to you as soon as I can.